I call to order the Town of Altaburg Zoning Commission regular and hybrid meeting of Wednesday, January 4th, 2023 at 7 p.m. in Town Hall second floor conference room at 302 Main Street, Old Saybrook. Seated tonight, that's Thank me, you. Bob Friedman, Chair, Mark Calderella, Vice Chair, Ray, uh, Jerry Lewis, Secretary, regular commission members, Mark LaMonaco and Henry Thorson. Also present, alternate John Henry, Zoning Enforcement Officer, Chris Costa, Clerk Joanne Valley, and one person, <laughs> David, David, David Carswell. Thank you. Um, and we also have speakers. And as well on two people online. First, Da, da Costa <laughs> and uh, Winnie Gencarella. Hey, everybody. All right. And uh, um, next up. <clears throat> die. Next on the agenda is um, minutes of our meeting December 5th, 2022. Any additions or corrections? They look good. Did you find something? Hmm? What did you find? Nothing. I found nothing. Good. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes of Monday, December 5th. Second. All right, Jerry Lewis vote to accept the minutes of December 5th as presented, seconded by Mark Delmonico. Any discussion? All in favor of approving the minutes of December 5th, 2022, signify by say, saying aye. 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 Motion carries five in favor, unanimously five in favor. Next on the agenda is uh, correspondence. Oh, we have a, a greeting card from Nathan L. Jacobson and Associates at Land Survey and Technical Services. They've been in business for 50 years. I'm good. Any other correspondence? Yes. Yeah. Nope. <laughs> then we have election of officers. Uh, the, the floor will be open for nominations for chairman. I'll nominate. Bob oh, Friedman second. as chairman. Second. Is there a second? Jerry Lewis nominates me, Bob Friedman, for chair. Seconded by Mark Calderola. Are there any other nominations? Is there a motion to close nominations for chairman? So moved. Mark, Mark and Jerry make and second. A motion to close nominations for chair. And then is there, is there a motion to to cast a unanimous ballot for the only nominee? So moved. Mark Calderola moves to cast the unanimous ballot for Bob Friedman for chairman of the Zoning Commission for 2023. Is there a second. second seconded by Jerry Lewis? Any any discussion? All in favor of the motion, signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries unanimously five zero zero. Vice Chairman. Uh, I'll make a nomination. motion. I'll make a motion to nominate um, Mark Calderella for vice chair. Right, I'll second that nomination. Then further nominations for vice chair for the zoning commission in 2023. None appearing. I'll move that nominations for vice chair be closed. Seconded by Second. Jerry Lewis. And a discussion on the motion to close nominations. None appearing. All in favor of closing nominations for vice chair. Aye. Five zero zero. That motion carries. I'll make a motion to declare a unanimous ballot for Mark Calderella for vice chair of zoning commission for 2023. Second. Seconded by Jerry Lewis. All in favor? Aye. One, two, three, four, five. Motion carries unanimously. Mark Calderella, vice chair. Congratulations. Thank you, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> Nominations for secretary. Any nominations? Nominate Jerry Lewis. I'll second that. Uh, Mark Calderella nominates Jerry Lewis for secretary, seconded by Bob Friedman. Any further nominations? None appearing. I'll move nominations be closed. Seconded by Mark Delmonico. Oh, Mark. Uh, all in favor of closing <laughs> nominations for secretary, signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries unanimously. I'll make a motion to cast a unanimous ballot for Geraldine Lewis for Secretary of the Zoning Commission in 2023. Second. Seconded by Mark Calderella. All in favor of the motion? Aye. Five, five zero zero motion, Jerry Lewis. Oh, it gets you unanimously <laughs> voted in as Secretary of the Zoning Commission for 2023. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Next up on the agenda is public hearings. 
Roman numeral five, a workshop to discuss drive-through windows as an accessory use for financial institutions, pharmacies, indoor restaurants, or other food and beverage establishments, especially in section 53, the moratorium is currently in, for, in, in force. Is that right, Chris? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. And this um, extent, the moratorium extends until April 28th of 2023. Uh, purpose is to discuss drive-through operations with guest speakers, David Carswell, Winnie Gencarella, Paul Allen, and Chris Da Costa. Uh, yes, so have you, you've given, you've, Chris, Chris Costa, our CEO, has given you some background information and we're asking for some real world on the ground, boots on the ground type uh, uh, issues, concerns, rec and recommendations if you might have some for uh, what might be uh, useful in our determination of regulating drive-through windows. We have three different kinds. That's, that's a lot, yeah. Um, so uh, just to give you guys a bit of a background on myself, uh, myself and my family, we own and operate uh, 80 Duncans, uh, including many in, in Connecticut, uh, Westbrook, uh, Old Saybrook uh, we acquired this year. Uh, the prior owner was a resident in town and, and an old friend, uh, and he retired. Uh, so we are in Westbrook and Clinton. We kind of pepper the shoreline, Madison. <clears throat> um, my job specifically is what we're talking about. Uh, remodels, new builds, relocations, um, that whole thing. Uh, so I'm very familiar with a lot of, you know, the, the process with the towns and what they like and don't like and what we see. Um, um, I, I'm not, wasn't really prepared in terms of, uh, 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 you know, what you guys um, were looking to hear. I know I, I'd spoken to Chris, uh, certainly happy to uh, answer any kind of uh, questions. I mean, in terms of what we're doing today, and again, I speak for Duncan, I, I can't speak for, you know, CVS is a much different footprint in size and as our banks. Uh, for us, you know, COVID has really um, uh, increased the, importance of drive through It was always, you know, it was always king or prior, uh, but it's really just kind of moved it forward. And we are seeing a lot of towns are a bit warmer to the, you know, to the idea uh, because it's, it's, an, it's something that people want, especially something like COVID, even the, the board of health, there's less touch and all that type of, and all that type of thing. We are probably our, the biggest change for us uh, in terms of building uh, as we are building uh, now with this new construction, we're, we're, we're generally looking at smaller footprint and really doing a lot of drive-through only stores. Um, you know, the walk-in um, the walk-in business is sliding. Uh, you know, people don't want to talk to anybody. If, they, if it is walk-in, they want to use the app and get out. Uh, and we're noticing that seating in stores isn't as important. Uh, you know, in some cases, it's a hindrance because the drive through being the window being so important for us was predicated on speed. You know, when you have just the window that your whole team is focused on, you, you operate that much faster. You know, there's, there's, there's one, you know, if you walk into a dunk and you have the front counter and you need some people doing that and you have the drive through and you need some doing that. And now we even have the, the on the go uh, portion, which is the, you know, the printer for the app for people coming in, picking up and leaving. So we have really three points of access now and we're finding that we're better when it's one, uh, as you would expect, when it's when it's one place, and uh, we're seeing operationally, it's easier to operate uh, in a, in a drive-through only environment, and we're in the, in the, and the sales are in the similar place. Um, you know the the other the other part of it uh, is the is just the metrics. I mean, I mean, you know, we've closed uh, we've closed eight stores the last two years, and we have a, a slate of more of walk-in only locations, you know, uh, in, in your area, particularly it's tough when you're on the shoreline, you're really busy, you're busy, busy in the, in the, in the summertime, uh, uh, not so much old say, but maybe a bit further down, but you know, uh, you, you certainly have a, a jump in the summer, but you know, we're still sustainable, but these seasonal stores, you need to make all your money in a three month window and in a walk-in store, you can't gas stations are closing, smaller walk-in stores are closing. Uh, we always, uh, you know, uh, approach towns about the idea of a drive-through, um, 
just sometimes doesn't work, you know, and we can understand that if it's in a residential area or what, what that may be. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's, that's kind of what we're looking to do. Uh, you know, uh, it's a lot of what I do today is, is, is that, is that piece of the business is relocating to assets with windows. The, uh, I think drive throughs in a parking lot is becoming more uh, popular, especially with, with what you guys do. Um, nobody wants a stack on the, on the street. Um, and the parking lot kind of cancels that in the sense of, uh, of course, if you have the proper stacking. Um, so we're seeing a bit more of that. You didn't used to see that. We used to have shops in Orlando and, and these bigger footprints, you, that's very common. Uh, but in the Northeast, it's not so easy with such smaller size, you know. Um, what, the real what square thing. footage do you have in mind? Square footage, smaller, what? <laughs> for, for, uh, for, a, for the building? Yes. For, for the building, so we can do, uh, we have some, there are some concepts that have 800 square feet uh, to 1,200 would be a drive through is all we need today. Yeah. Yeah. 800, 800, 800 to 1,200. Right, right. Yeah. But we have at present a minimum commercial building size of 750 square feet and 800 would be compatible with that. Mm -hmm. And remember from our perspective, this is about the, the, the long view of the land use and should a business decide to vacate the what they leave behind has to be useful for something else uh I'm, I'm, i guess unless they tore it down to the ground uh, that 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 but that's not often done and we use dunkin donuts as an example in old saybrook of the former dunkin donuts uh was left uh, as a building that got uh remodeled and to the degree that it was no longer a trademark building that's another issue that we have in Old Saybrook. Uh, mm -hmm. tra trademark building is a sign. And so your, your, your colorful orange and pink DD um, uh, uh, items, accoutrements on the outside sure. become a sign because nobody else can do that and it's commercial speech. And so uh, what you've talked about so far in terms of building size would be compatible. The issues that we're considering have to do with the uh, um, pedestrian node in Old Saybrook runs along Route 1. Mm -hmm. And that's, we're installing sidewalks. We have some sidewalks. We're installing more sidewalks to encourage pedestrian use along Route 1. We have determined that drive-through uh, windows generate vehicular traffic that has to cross the sidewalk. Mm -hmm. And so we're, we're looking to minimize vehicle pedestrian interactions on those sidewalks where they are and where they will be. And then we also have the, as, as you know, with the newly opened Dunkin' Donuts drive through at Smithfield uh, Farms. Is Smith. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there, the stacking space is at times inadequate and reaches the pedestrian areas. So we are looking to address that issue uh, with any future drive-through applications. Uh, one view would be to put all the drive-through traffic on, uh, and stacking for entering the transaction and for exiting, put it all on the lot. So that's your problem, not the pedestrian's problem and not the state route one problem. And so that that that's one idea that that we have uh, based on real life experience. It, with regard to Starbucks uh, Wait, in, in, over in East, yeah. Oh yes, Chris. Just I mean, overall, a question I have, I think, for everyone is that I know Chris runs the new Dunkin' Donuts, and we're talking about we've got drive-through lanes where people ordering. We have drive-through lanes where people are merging in for pickup. And what what do you think works and doesn't work with the current Duncan or these current sites or things you feel we're going to see more? I know you did briefly discussed stacking because more people are not going to go into the building. But mm -hmm. what are your thoughts on how the industry is changing and your actual operation through those windows? 
Right. We allow and Chris Costa, by the way, the other. Oh, man. <laughs> great, great name. Great name. Great name. <laughs> the regulations allow a drive through window, one, and a, it's not, it's a, uh, it's a, it's not accessory. It's called something else. It, it's a, it's a, it's a, like a, a, a subsidiary window. And so you a have one. Order, like a mobile order handoff. That's what that is. So like yeah. a mobile, uh, mobile handoff. So you yeah. can still drive up, get out of your car, get the thing and come back. So mm -hmm. that's the right. term that they use. Yes. The thought yeah. was that the first window would be for the transaction and the second window would, would be for product delivery. That's not, not how it works. Is that? No. no. Uh, so, no. so the 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 shop in Old Saybrook, uh, I think that was, I think we opened that one, and I think it was open in 2019. It was a bit of a prototype. I know the brand had, had built that one uh, with Randy. Um, a lot of times, so a lot of times on the, the on the on the go uh, with the drive through, it's not as popular. So, or uh, any of the deliverables. So, for instance, Uber Eats and uh, DoorDash and, and Grubhub. If if I'm if I'm driving for Uber Eats and I'm picking up a Dunkin' order, I don't want to go to a, a, a drive-through store because I'm going to just wait anyway. You know, uh, in in the line, even getting to that window, you can't just cut everybody off. Uh, a lot of times, you have a, a, like a um, on the drive-through concept. A lot of what we have. So when I say and I, I apologize, when I say drive-through only, usually, so I'm building one today uh, in in uh, in Massachusetts, and it is a drive-through only and you uh, walk, there's essentially a vestibule. We have one uh, similar in Clinton. We have one um, similar. It wasn't done as well, but, uh, but uh, essentially you walk in and you have maybe a, um, you know, it's maybe 14 by 10 area and you'll have it for uh, customers that want to walk in and order on a kiosk. You can do so, which isn't, hasn't really taken as much, but it is a pickup area. So if you're on your phone, you can place your order and you can just open the door you grab it and you're out. So that kind of satisfies uh, in, in certain areas where, uh, like a plaza, where maybe some people like walking to the supermarket next door and they want to grab a coffee and, and 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 hit the supermarket, they can still walk in and walk out as long as they have the app. Uh, the kiosks are in place. You know, McDonald's is doing them. They're not as popular for us at this time. Uh, so we do. So when I say a drive-through only, they generally are starting to come with some kind of an application to satisfy the the window you speak of, the dual window is not often seen uh it's it's you know uh, uh, a lot of times again because of the how it merges on the line it doesn't we haven't seen that it really works uh with that second pickup window the idea is there hasn't been exec from what i've seen the execution hasn't been hasn't been there because because a lot of people don't go to a drive through store for a pickup right so you don't have that demand. You know, if I'm picking up, I, I don't want to go to the drive through store. I'll go down the street to one where I can, I can park and walk in and grab it. So it's shopping by appointment, and it's op operating sort of like a vending machine. You drive <laughs> up, and there's, and, and there's some form of payment, electronic or, or whatever, and yeah. you take your stuff out of the, the box that it's in, and you drive away. Yeah. So that's... I'm sure that's a different concept from when our existing regulations were written down. Yeah, I, I you know, folks, uh, I'm, I'm just kind of telling you what, what, what it is and what we're seeing from the brand and kind of how we're uh, trying to evolve, you know, how it's evolving, uh, you know, um, what you guys specifically approve or don't do is, you know, it's not, that's not really for me to, to say. <laughs> well, it's helpful to understand the operation. Yeah. So thank you for sure. coming. Chris and, and, and Winnie, what do you see for the requirement of stacking now? Um, well, I have a I have a phenomenal case at my store in East Lyme. <laughs> <laughs> the worst stacking situation incurred to man. Um, than you guys have ever been there. Um, but uh, yeah, so the stacking situation, you know, one of the, the challenges we run into, and, and again, East Lyme used to be a, you know, literally a visitor's building. Um, and so it's not designed for what it, it has been created for. Um, so one of the issues with stacking, like you had said, is that you have to really watch the traffic flow and the pattern because you will, um, and we've had car accidents in our, in our parking lot. We've, we've incurred issues with people trying to back up, get out. Um, you know, you're kind of, you're, you're walking a fine line between, you know, people getting stuck. 
um, in those lines and not being able to get out and, and get around. Um, I did run the Groton Starbucks as well for two years and they have a seven car stack. And what we mean by that is that this, the, the stack is how many cars are in line from the time that they order at the, and it's not even a window, it's, a, it's like a speaker essentially. How many cars are in line from the time they order at the speaker until they pick up their items for purchase? So when, when people talk about stacks, that's kind of how we refer to the stack. So like East Lime has a two car stack. So from the time that the person orders till they, ret- they come to the window where they're greeted, it's two cars. Most, and I would say it's probably Dunkin' Donuts has this as well. You guys try to keep the stack as long as you can because the mm-hmm. longer the stack, so if you got a seven car stack, so there's seventh cars talking to the speaker, ordering their food and beverages, by the time they get up to the window, it's all ready. So, because the way these things are developed inside the store, there's ovens, there's all kinds of things going on. The idea is to create a, an effortless flow of food and beverage um, as quickly as you can um, so that the person's not waiting. So the, it's almost as if the, it's continually moving. It's kind of a continually moving, flowing situation. I, I am familiar with Old Saybrook and I've been there. I mean, I've been in the area for 13 years and I, I'm very familiar with the sidewalks and the, the, the setup and the buildings are pretty close together. And, um, you know, it is, this is a tough one. I will, you know, having that drive through is, is a phenomenal thing has been great for business. Um, and if it's done the right way, if it's done, with a lot of thought put into it, it can be a beautiful experience, but it's also, there's a lot of, there's a lot of things you have to think about because, you know, with, uh, like Chris said, with the advent of mobile order and pay, that's a whole nother animal in and of itself. And, um, but the stack is essentially, and, and even contractors now know these terms, is how many cars, I mean, you can talk to a Starbucks contractor and they will tell you everything that they they know everything um so one of the things that's different like mcdonald's has a window that you go up to to speak into to talk to a person we don't so all of our all of our windows i think at duncan as well is a speaker or it's a fate it's a it's a it's a tv and so you're you have some ability to and you should always have like some ability to move out of line if you can so that you can get out of line if needed I can, I can tell you from working in uh, pretty big towns, Groton and East Lyme are not small, uh, many of the cops will not get in the line. They will come in through the mobile order and pay, get their drinks so they don't get stuck in line. <laughs> they need to leave quickly. Um, so, you know, it is very tricky. One of the things that the towns will often do, in fact, our, our store in particular has a sidewalk an egress of a sidewalk on both sides. And the town uh, has decided that they wanted to cut off one of the sidewalks in order to prevent traffic accidents. So we had to put up a barrier. The town put up an actual physical barrier so that cars cannot go over one egress. So we only have one way in and one way out and that's it. So that's another thing to think about as far as drive throughs how many ways out do you have on that property um because now we only have one way in and one way out so it's it's you know people are not happy but um what, you know, so. what, are the one way in and one way out the same single curb cut or are yep. they one, yeah okay you go yeah. in and then you go out and so what happens is and we run into this a lot and it's you know i can tell you the landlord's not happy about it but he has to he has to deal with it um it was causing so the, the two egresses, one of them during COVID, we only became drive through because they shut the cafes down. So our cafe was shut down f- to come into and we were only drive through. And so we caused a lot of traffic pattern problems because they the cars went into two different, came in two different ways. So that is one of the issues that you have to look at when you're looking at the footprint of the building. Can you have a way in and a way out um, for cars coming in and cars coming out. And if you don't have that, which in some cases you don't, how are you gonna maneuver that with the window? And how, it's gonna, how is it gonna look 
realistically when you have, I mean, we do $50,000 a week in coffee in our store. So I do about 800 to 900 people a day coming through transactions. So it gets a little, it's mayhem sometimes. So that's something that, you know, when you're looking at the footprint of a building, is there, is there an access point to come in and is there one to go out or is it just one way in and one way out? And how wide do you need that to be? It just if, eliminates problems. I'm sorry. If there is only one curb cut, so that has, yep. to, has to function for entering and exiting the lot, then yep. you, ha you have to circumnavigate the building or, mm -hmm. else, or, else, or if you didn't, there would, have, it, there would be cross traffic on site. Oh, yeah, we have cross traffic because people um, like to come in, park, come in, get their coffee. And then, you know, uh, some people don't like the drive through and some people don't like mobile order and pay. They want to come in and have the cafe experience. And then they when they leave, they have to wait for the drive through line just to for people to move and get away from each other so they can get out of their car. But this has been like this for 10 years. I mean, it's got to be 10 years now. Um, they've never been able to change it. And um, it's, it's just where the building is. But with you guys having the ability to, you know, I, I mean, I know I'm familiar with Old Saybrook. So you do have some, there are areas where there's like large parking lots where it would be a lot more feasible. But yeah, we have to do it one way in and one, like you, they can, they can go against traffic is what ends up happening. Yeah, I, I also, I agree with, uh, you know, with um, Winnie's comments in terms of stacking, it's the same. You know, uh, Duncan, if, if I submit a site to me today, they won't, they won't even look at it unless you have at least five cars. They won't, right. they won't look at anything smaller. It's gotta be at least five. The stacking after the menu board, you know, the more, the more is always better because no one, we don't want, the, we, we, we don't want the same things you guys don't want. But in terms of how it works, you uh, should right on in terms of the stacking and how it works from the board to the thing, it's the same, same, same thing. And some places are grandfathered in. So, you know, uh, we're kind of stuck where we are. In fact, we were going to try to extend the drive through. And if we tried to <laughs> file a permit for that, they would remove the drive through. So they don't want us messing with our drive through. <laughs> uh, they were not happy about that. So we're going to stick with what we have or else we lose it all together. And, but I will say to Chris's point, um, our drive through is 60% of our business now. So it used to be like 30, 40 almost half, but not quite, because we did a lot of cafe business. Um, mobile order during COVID, that changed 100%. So if there are businesses that want to do drive-through, um, they're going to look at all of this data, which is going to show them that it's it's blown out of the water. I mean, um, it's a big change from 10 years ago when there was a few drive-through places, but they weren't doing the level of business that we are now. But uh, I mean, on any given day, in fact, it's pretty set. My drive through business out the window is 60% of my business every day. So it's it's very popular, um, but it can be very, very, um, it, can, it can cause chaos too. So there's no, it has to be done with a lot of thought put into it, um, you know, and, and people that know what they're doing. Uh, because if they're not, I mean, I'm sure Chris, after opening that many stores, you're probably very familiar with it, but um, a business wanting to do that has to have people that know how to do a drive through the right way. Mm -hmm. um, and some places won't, it won't be, it won't be great. It'll, it'll cause more problems for you guys. Um, but it is a very profitable situation for a business looking to open um, if they can, if they can do it. Um, I would love one in Old Saybrook. I go to Old Saybrook. <laughs> Uh, I live in Lyme, so I'm not that far away. Um, but you know, it's it's tricky. It's definitely tricky. But um, you know, that that is the there's the 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 stack is an issue. The um, the ability to get out of line, not to be stuck, so you so you can't get out. Of, I've had people actually break down in our drive-through line in Groton, and had to be towed out. I mean, it can it can be yeah, it can be great. We presently have three food-related drive-throughs. We have, right. Uh, right, we, we have um, Dunkin' Donuts. Dunkin', yep. sorry. 
and we have uh, McDonald's, and we have Burger King. They're right. all in different. They're all in different. <clears throat> And so you should not use any one of them as an example of what would be allowed today in the same district. Please right. don't do that. So we're trying to write the regulations so that where they will be permitted will work. Yeah. Right. So I look at the, the, the way the traffic flows and the, the business, and it seems to me that the Burger King building being so far away from the curb cut keeps all of the business on the lot. They get to do what, whatever they want with the spacing yep. between the, the speaker for the order and their stack to the windows. Yep. And that's all well and good in the back. And that would seem, based on what I've heard this evening, that would seem to be a, a preferred layout. That's ideal. That is an ideal situation. And even, you know, honestly, even the Duncan uh, near Smithland is actually not a bad, it's not bad. I mean, I, I've gotten into it before but you can avoid other people. You, you, there is a wide girth because you have that parking lot right there. So that isn't, I, I mean, I don't mind that one, honestly. That's it. But you would want to have minimally five car stack. So that's one of the points. Minimally a five car stack to avoid. Um, but, the, but the five car stack is, is from your point of order to pick yep. up. Right. Yes, right. Yes. When we look at the stack, we look at it all the way. So it, right. it's prior to your five car stack. Right. You want to. Yeah, the DOT, the DOT has given us some general rules regarding stacking spaces under their stack concept. Okay. And they have actually broken it down to recommending uh, a different number for Duncan because, okay. of, because of real world experience. Sure. So yeah. they, they, have, they have different stacks for different purposes. and. It's up to us to uh, assimilate all these different things and figure out what works on a particular property size, let's say. Sure. Well, I know that we just opened, and Chris, you might be familiar with this, but we just opened the first Starbucks that's attached to a gas station that's drive through only and mobile order and pickup only. There's no cafe. You cannot enter it from the gas station. You can't go anywhere near it. All you can do is pick up at the window in front of the gas station or you go in the drive through and that's in Waterford, um, and that's a 10-car stack, if you can believe that, um, and that was an effort to make it, you know, really a premier drive-through experience for the customer, um, so I don't know what the Starbucks, you know, uh, I mean, they're I think they're different based on the towns and where they're, you know, looking and stuff like that. But I know they're looking at more drive through stores. So the stacks will get, you know, expanded. Um, definitely. But. Well, Saybrook has uh, presently drive throughs are only accessory uses to an indoor okay. food, food service or a okay. restaurant. Mm -hmm. and so the one you mentioned, the Starbucks in Waterford, would not be permitted because that would be a a, a principal use Correct. Without, without being accessory to something else. So that's part mm. of what we're trying to get our heads around. Is that the direction that's good for Old Saybrook? Uh, right now, we, we we don't have that answer tonight, but yeah. we're aware it's, that it, we're yeah. aware that it's out there. Right. Yeah, I think it's different for you know Old Saybrook is an old town and and it's. You know, primarily, um, you know, you have sm smaller buildings, you don't have big high rises, you don't have large medical buildings, things like that. It It's a very New England town. Um, and I think, you know, it, well, I mean, we already have a Starbucks there, it's clearly a cafe. Um, but I think that, you know, even if you have I mean, do you, are you guys in, are you in favor of doing, I know you have their accessory units right now, but. Oh. We lost you. The video is off, the mic is on. Lost there. Okay. One of the, uh, one of the other points, if I can just throw out there that I will say that we do see sometimes, um, concerns from especially when it's a uh if we're looking to put a drive-through in like an area that is 
somewhat resi like residential, you know, we have some outside the city in Boston and some of these and in Bridgeport, <clears throat> you know, uh, a lot of times people with Duncan, maybe a bit different from Starbucks, but there, there are so many, you know, that people think, well, if you put one in here, it's going to be the one that kind of uh, it causes traffic, you know, and assuming the stacking, uh, listen, the, you guys are right on with the, with the size of the site, you know, not all drive through is bad, but the site's got it's got to work, you know. Um, a lot of times, the, the they you know we do all the, the the studies and the traffic studies. The traffic exists today. You know, Duncan is a is 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 not a destination. It's a convenience. No one's going to go out of their way. You go to work, you pass ten of them. You don't go you don't go towards one specifically because it's that one. You go to one whichever one you choose on the way to work. If you make that ten eleven. You know, again, it's kind of particular to our brain because of our throughput is our problem in such a small amount of time. Uh, it, 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 we haven't seen it ever kind of cause that, make that concern. A lot of times you're really taking cars uh, off of the off of the road and putting them onto a site all in the morning that are circulating. So a lot of it's, it's, it's a kind of a, a general like from what I've seen, a misconception, uh, in my opinion, you know, uh, of course, in in certain neighborhoods, they, they kind of um, you know, they want us to provide data with with traffic. We do the studies and they always tell us, you know, we have to come back in six months and provide an updated study. And we never get there. When I call, they say, don't worry about it because there is no it, the traffic is already existing. Again, I'm not speaking so much for, for Old Saybrook, but just kind of something else that we see sometimes. It's tough to say when you go through the process, um, you know, people want the data and we understand that and we do the studies. But it is a lot of times, again, you're, you're on the way. You're, you're That's the way you're going anyway. We just put one on the way that that is on the way to where you're going as it is. No one's going out of their way. Maybe like a Chick-fil-A, if there's only one in the area, that's going to draw. Everybody's going to go there. There's only one. It's, it's a destination. For us, we're, you know, you just pick which one you want on the way. You know, it's a bit, it's a bit different in that regard. <clears throat> All right. First question. Can I just ask one question sure. before we, how do you handle the issue of people with the mobile orders merging with the people ordering at the drive-thru. I know there's kind of a, people told me as they go through the Duncan, your Duncan in Old Saybrook, that people will cut people off, but then buy the person behind them a coffee. I mean, how does that, how does that work? I mean, does it cause people fighting or? It's, it's, kind, of, it's kind of what I mentioned. I mean, uh, a bit new to the store, to that one in particular, um, you know, uh, we, uh, we've had it for six yeah. months. Uh, but it is, um, yeah. to my opinion, in my opinion, why it doesn't work. Um, that 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 merge piece. Um, you're right. The car comes in, and they just want to get their stuff, and they're ready. So they kind of cut somebody else off. It's it's kind of something that that happens. There's no there's no real. We have our job inside the four walls, which is to get everything ready and get it done as fast as we can. You know, um, it's just kind of a. It's not crazy often you know i mean again the mobile pickup on drive throughs isn't a huge part of the business on drive through stores uh but you know that's kind of why the merging it's it's difficult it's probably easier just to go in and pick it up than sit in the in the line i'm i sat in the line at dunkin donuts I, they don't no one cuts you off they sit and wait for you to let them in yeah. it has not ever been a problem at all and it goes very quickly because everyone's They're, so nice. Uh, everyone's <laughs> nice here in Old Saber. That's why. Oh yeah. Know about other towns. I like you. I like you. <laughs> Chris, I have a question for you. You mentioned earlier that you're uh, designing a, a strictly a drive-through facility. Mm -hmm. um, does that contain two separate, one on each side of the building for pickup windows? No, we would. I mean, we would call that. Uh, they have a double drive-through. It's a bit of a newer concept. Uh, uh, we don't have any of those on, you know, in New England. You, you need a kind of a wide space for that, a uh, yes. big piece of property for it. Uh, this one in particular that I'm working on, it was a, it was a Santander bank. It was a drive through okay. um, and uh, not a huge building in a plaza, um, in a big Y uh, uh, plaza. And um, again, uh, just putting the window in the vestibule, we're again, building out a bit so it can attract some people to come in and, uh, and, uh, and, and grab their, they can still place mobile order and grab and there is a kiosk if they choose they can technically go in and place an order and just wait and it'll be dropped off from the counter right in front of them in this little this little kind of area that in my opinion is what you know, listen you can't and it's not all of them i mean we're not like you know starbucks still has like that 
that that uh, people that want to sit down, you know, uh, I know when you said she's about 60 percent, you know, Duncan, it's you know, we're closer in some stores are around 80 percent, 75. I mean, that's that's a big it's a big jump, you know, for us um, because no one wants to sit inside and not as many people want to sit inside of Duncan. Um, that's maybe maybe the biggest difference between the two, uh, the two brands. Um, but uh, you, we, we wouldn't do all again. You're not going to see all drive through only stores. You know, it's kind of want to have some. But, you know, you don't need to have five stores in one town that they all have seating. I mean, it's, it's, that's unnecessary. So as, as it's evolving, we're changing, pulling some back and, and changing how that looks. If you if you had the ability to develop a site from scratch where <laughs> there was nothing on the property and it was going to be a drive through only facility. How do you envision that? Um, you know, you're, if, if it's a, if somewhat of a elongated, uh, elongated piece of property, you know, the stack can kind of whip around and come almost like a U shape, right? Mm-hmm. But you want, you, want your, you want your level to be uh, deep. So, you know, so you can stack most of them on our cars. It's, it's, kind of a tough, it's kind of a tough question to, to answer. I mean, everything right. is. I mean, I've never really had that. You know, I never. I wish I, you know, it was, we had these little blank sheet of paper to kind of draw how we want it to look. We usually, you know, uh, morph it to make it work as best we can, especially in so much of these tight, tight areas. It is, uh, you know, guys, New England. You know, uh, 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 you know, it's been around a long time, and it is the, the thing I will say, which is not, you know, necessarily uh, uh, what you, you guys uh, kind of uh, kind of aspire for, but the customers always figure it out. We got some crazy, crazy drive-throughs from the old days, and they are zigzags and crossovers. And somehow, <laughs> customers figure it out. I mean, it's, uh, trust me. Uh, maybe our, our maybe our highest volume store, one of our highest volume stores, it, it's a mess. And we went to the town. The town wanted it, so we kind of he said, "Okay, this is what you guys want," and it works. I mean, it is a mess, but it works. They 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 figure it out. It's like you know. Mm-hmm. And I have their well, it's just what it is. I mean, thank you. Thank you. Sure. Dave's been patient. Dave's been patient. Yeah. Dave wants a cup of coffee. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm Dave Carswell, uh, manager for Guilford Savings Bank. We're located here in town at 840 Boston Place Road. Mm-hmm. So, right on a, a main thoroughfare that you're addressing tonight. All right. I think I'm going to speak more to what we have really in front of us, it's changing habits, how we're doing business. And, and I applaud you as a body for addressing this. Now, if you're familiar with our location, uh, you as a customer, as a, as a client, would enter um, on the west side of the property, right? and we don't have a stacking problem. The reason we don't have a stacking problem is because this body and the uh, Architectural Review Committee 15 years ago uh, ultimately we agreed that the entrance would be to the west and you would enter uh, or uh, after after the transaction leaving the uh, drive through you'd exit to the north, right. which, by the way, Old Saver Police Department loves to park in my parking lot. And <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I love it. And there's a reason that they love parking. Uh, nonetheless, you know, during the COVID, uh, we'll say the COVID years, the COVID pandemic, uh, take it whatever dates you wish, but 2021 in there, um, you know, 100% of our, uh, all, virtually 100% of our business was done through the drive through We were open for business in the lobby by appointment only, okay? But COVID being what it was, the pandemic, um, 100% of our business was done through the drive There were times that cars were stacked but the way, again, the way our property is designed, it was a non-issue. Um, yeah, to Chris's point, it was more of an issue of people having patience and things of that nature and adapting to a new environment. Um, currently, we took a, uh, a, a survey 
build some data and between uh, from the months of June to September of 22, 61% of our business uh, was done through drive-through of our transactions, okay? done through drive-through. So again, that supports uh, Winnie's experience in that, uh, you know, right me, in that system. Does that even include online transactions like from your computer and your phone? So you raise a great point, you raise a great point because digital banking uh, has, has you, you've got three factors, all right, three considerations. In lobby, right? Uh, drive up and online banking. And that where does ATM fit? Well, the ATM, frankly, is in our is in you know that's going to be a lobby a, a drive up transaction okay. because it, uh, for us we have dual lanes and the ATM is uh, in the outside. Do you have an ATM in your building? Too? No, we don't. No. Um, and that was by design. Um, but when we start talking total transactions in a given day, uh, the digital uh, business is tremendous. And similar to coffee, you, know, you order your coffee, you go, you, know, you order it online, right? And go and you pick it up. Well, uh, the digital uh, business with banking is significant. And it's, it's going to be changing even more. Um, banks of the future are going to be much smaller. All the more recent banks, uh, branches that we've opened uh, uh, since the pandemic, we've opened two, their footprint is much smaller. And it's to address uh, largely the, the digital uh, transformation that's happening. Um, we haven't. Uh, We've been watching our business and, and really what I want this body to think of is, is the changing habits, exactly what you, what you brought up is that more business is being done online, habits are changing. Uh, before COVID, there are certain age groups that we would see in the branch regularly. Now, since COVID, those age groups have gotten used to driving through. They're not getting out of the car. I don't know if it's because they need hips and knees replaced or what, but they, you know, they prefer drive through. And that's we're starting to really see, and it's it also speaks to the the busyness that we live each day, how yeah. busy we are, and the rush we need to get places and do things. And so you know, it's incumbent on businesses to uh, enable society to do business the way society wants to. So um, as far as stacking goes, um, you, know, you look at Liberty Bank. We really don't have a stacking issue at Liberty Bank. They're set up similarly and that you'd enter uh, and have a right angle exit. They exit out onto Main Street. They've got two lanes. Periodically, well, pre-COVID, periodically, they would back up onto, what's the side street there? Coulter. Coulter. Yeah, Coulter. Um, the fact that the exit is right turn only Correct. helps because if there were left turns involved there oh yeah no that one nightmare yeah. nightmare mm -hmm. and it's sometimes it's not so easy depending upon the time of day it's not so easy on the lot either yeah uh, you know i there was a slight backup yesterday just because there was a busy time on, on the lot you look at the stacking issues for um uh, Bank of America, for example, and they've got a very short ride. All right, you know, it doesn't take much for them to back up onto the side street. There. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but all of those things are changing now, and uh, because of people's habits, and 
And so I think the timing for this body to address exactly what you're talking about, it's very timely. Now, do you see ATMs phasing out as people, I mean, people are using less cash? Actually, um, ATMs are changing and they're becoming uh, more modernized in that uh, some of the ATMs that are out there now are uh, ITMs or um, where you actually go up to the ATM, there's a screen and a live person comes on that screen and talks to you. This is not a uh, you know electronic image, it's a real person. But uh, those can be standalone models where they're just buried into the side of, a, of, a, of an existing <laughs> building. Um, banking is changing and that is very much in the, in the future. And it's something that our bank is absolutely it's a way to expand your footprint without a terrible amount of uh, investment. And people can work from home and talk virtually through the side of a building to the customer. Or you can log on and talk to a real person if you need to. And, and that's technology that we're investigating as well. Um, and so that takes digital banking one step further. But it gets, you know, that's, that's one component. It, address the, the traffic yeah. concerns uh, that we're speaking to today. So uh, the, the earlier part of our meeting this evening had to do with housing. And there was a big push for Old Saybrook and everyone else in Connecticut to increase housing types. And one which we are looking to increase is to have residential over commercial. Are there any examples of residential over a drive through I've never heard of one. So, in full disclosure, I'm previous press, past president of Hope Partnership. And we, as you may already know, create affordable workforce housing. And so when we start okay. talking, right, Jerry? Yes. So, uh, and, and again, in full disclosure, I'm chairman of the properties committee for, um, for uh, Hope Partnership. So, uh, Along those lines, um, we uh, just recently opened a uh, completed uh, transformation of Spencer's Corner in uh, Centerville. And that's a case where we uh, renovated three, three floors, uh, three stories of commercial property, <laughs> consolidated. Uh, the first floor to commercial only uh, condominiums, commercial condominium office space. And the top two floors we created, um, uh, second floor and third floor, we created um, uh, 17 apartments. They're beautiful. Yes, they are. I haven't seen them. They're beautiful. But Along those, you know, there's no reason why uh, mixed use. We're continuing. We whole partnership is continuing to look at mixed use opportunities, um, in part because uh, land has become so scarce or unaffordable. One yeah. of them too. Yeah. Um, all the easy lands has already been. Developed. All the easy lands gone. That what's left is either unbuildable. Yeah. You know, a lot of because and we don't have sewers. And you don't have sewers. Old does not have sewers. Most of the shoreline does not have sewers. So running, we can speak for another hour on this topic alone. Um, but the uh, what's now known as the loss at Spencer's Corner is has been um, a, a fine example for the uh, uh, Connecticut Department of Housing because it is mixed use and has been um, very, very well received by the residents and the, and the commercial. Um, look around Old Sabre. Are there properties that could be transformed <laughs> to mixed use residential? You bet. Yes. You bet. 
I think um, what we're kind of thinking though is as we go more towards mixed use, what do we do in that situation where you have a drive-through proposal with apartments above? It's going to be a challenge. And, and I mean, I don't know, Chris, do you have any or Winnie any experiences with apartments above drive-throughs? Um, I I'll be honest, guys. I I we don't, and I there's none I can think of. Not not you yeah. know. You see a lot of obviously mixed use is huge, and cer certainly in the cities, it's you see them everywhere. But uh, I, I would guess, you know, there's issues with parking, you know, behind the building and, you know, how, how do you make that work? I, 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 have, I haven't, I, and there's none that I can think of, personally. No, I can't. Not work. Yeah. And on top of that, you've got the concern of traffic versus pedestrian. Right. That right. Be, that's, that's the ultimate pedestrian vehicle conflict. If, yeah, if you yeah. lived at the drive-through, yeah. And it also, it I would think air quality issues for people that live yeah yeah oh yeah <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> yeah what i'm trying yeah nothing really i think one of the things too that probably should be put sort of into the thought process of it too is that if you have a drive-through window and say a business wants to do a drive-through and so they're you know proposing this one of the sort of key aspects of a drive through window is speed. Um, and, you know, we actually, and when I say speed, I mean that whatever it is that you're creating or you're giving out that window should take a, a finite amount of time to do in order to create a um, good experience for a drive through. So banking, you know, generally, I mean, I've gone in drive throughs with banking. You can, it's, you know, it can be like a five to 10 minute process, but anything that's going to take 20 minutes, 15 minutes is going to be wearing on the customers and it's going to cause more problems um, as far as if you have a, a sidewalk situation. So drive through kind of runs in tandem with speed um, and agility, essentially as far as flexibility on where you can put things. So that's always kind of been a, one of the aspects. So whatever business it might be that's looking at something like that, you would have to include in your, if you're coming up with how would you, what would be the requirements for a drive through business? Um, the product itself has to be able to be created or brought out to that window quickly. One just quick thing. I don't know. Um, Paul Allen from CVS was supposed to be here tonight. I don't know okay. if he's under a different email of Fran or Kim. Is Paul here? Raise your hand. Raise okay. your hand if you're here. Okay. I just don't want to exclude yeah. him if he's on someone else's yeah. Zoom so, account. With regard to societal changes post COVID and whatever. You're, what I heard is that you wish to have rapid preparation of the order to deliver to the person in the vehicle at the window at the appropriate time separation from their right. uh, from their microphone order. That doesn't yes. include that. That doesn't include the pre-order on the phone, though. So what nope. happens? Uh, is is the phone pre-ordered through your app? Not yes. as popular because uh, what, I, no. what I could see happening is there'd be a whole group of people uh, that in increasing over time of placing their order when they hit the corner on their way to the store so that they've ad adjusted the time gap back from the stack from the window right. back so that right. it'll be ready when they get there. Right. I've had people yeah. order in the drive through. So they literally order their stuff in the drive-thru. Um, so com our company and probably Dunkin' Donuts as well has a, it gives you a little like notice. Your order will be ready in five minutes or your order will be by, by this time. And of course that's not in fact always the case based on the, what's the elements happening inside the store at the time. Um, however, yes, myself and Chris probably agree. The customer figures it out they do what is most comfortable for them um, and they will make the system work for them in whatever way that they need to. And so um, 
again, our mobile order and pay is, you know, 30% of our business and the drive through is 60. And it's really just about not wanting to get out of your car and not wanting to have to wait inside a building with other people. Um, but they still order it on their app and then wait in line. So they just don't want to get out of the car. Um, and they can be on their phone. Wow. They can be working. That yeah. That speaks to what we were talking about. I think I know. I know. I, I know for myself. Uh, I, I agree. You know, with, with Winnie's comments. I mean, I don't. Um, what we see across the board is that um, the in terms of the mobile order. Again, I mean, if you're someone that wants to order on your phone, uh, you know, usually they will find. Again, now now we are we're peppered quite a bit. You know, so it's a bit, maybe a bit different than you know uh, than even Starbucks in that area. Although in, in mass, Starbucks is everywhere too. Yeah. But, um, they find the walk-in stores. They generally, the walk-in store apps, uh, the app usage is, is triple, uh, sometimes right. four times as much as a drive through If I'm going to do, a, if I'm going to order on the phone, I gotta, I'll, I'll walk in and get it and leave. Why am I going to go to a drive through store and wait and, you know, to see? Maybe there's a lot of cars, maybe there's not. You don't know. But if you're going to place an order ahead of time, why wouldn't you just order one where you know you can just park, walk right in and get out? So the walk-in stores really dominate that, part of the business on uh, yeah. at, at least for me, I would guess it's the same for you guys. I mean, it's, it's, well, you know, it kind of cancels itself out. Yeah. You guys, you guys are all familiar with the Starbucks and Old Saybrook, correct? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Pretty much. Yeah. 60, Christine, who's the manager there, um, their mobile order pays 60% of their business. Yep. 60%. And it used to be half, half, like, you know, 40% and then COVID hit and they did the handoff plane. We call it a handoff plane because that's what it yeah, basically yeah. is. It's now sixty percent of their business. Yeah, that, that situation, the situation you spoke of, of you know, is someone going to jump in line and, and do that? It, it doesn't really work. It doesn't. That person is if if they're in a rush, then then they'll again they'll, they'll go to the, the store down the street for us, right in the corner there in the plaza, and they'll just walk in, get it, and walk out. That's right. fast. That's faster than placing the order and and maybe getting to a store and waiting in line in the drive thru to finally get there just to say, give me my stuff. Might as well just just went by the speaker and ordered it and got your stuff. Cause you got to wait in that line anyway. Right. So but a lot of people, a lot of people work in their car. They're on their phone in their car. We hear yeah. conversations all the time. They're working from, they're in their office. Like literally that's what's happening. You know, yeah. we're probably, the, you, Chris and I are probably the anomaly because well, I am anyway, because I work out of a building uh, every day, but most people now work either from home, they work in an office, but they go get their coffee, they go get their food, they go get their, you know, CVS, they go get their prescriptions and they're on their car phone, mm -hmm. you know, and they don't want to wait in line because they can't really talk privately on their phone in line in the store. Um, and everyone's, it's all, it's all, you know, phones now and everyone's chatting. So as far as old Saver is concerned, that's still going to be something that you guys have to move towards. And that, and, you know, for, you know, the, uh, the millennials, you know, they pay with their phones, they talk on their phones, they do everything. Everything is all combined into one thing. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it will be the way it, it works down the line. I think, I think as well, to, uh, to, to Winnie's points, that if you feel like, you know, people don't mind waiting as long because yeah, they don't. they're waiting, they're, they're looking at their phone, especially these young kids. I mean, no, they don't care. If, there's, if there's 15 cars in line, Yep. Okay, I got time. I'm going to be on my phone. Wherever I'm going, I'm going to be on my phone anyway. <laughs> I might as well just sit here and be on my phone while I'm waiting to get my coffee. Yeah, you they like will. Yeah, that's the, that is the other thing that changed too is, is people. The good thing for people that want to open a drive through in a, in a town is that that hurdle of the, well, I'm going to wait 10 minutes and the customers are getting upset. Um, that's over. Uh, COVID kind of gave us permission to have these long drive throughs and have these long wait times and do this because people have adapted and that's a real thing. People have actually adapted to that. And I've watched it. I mean, I see it every single day. It's crazy, but, um, you know, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, um, if there's a problem at the window and people are waiting, they'll wait. So having a drive through window, not just an accessory window, but actually creating a building that has a drive through window. The idea that there's this sort of like anxiety about there being the customer not waiting, they will wait now because society has changed their outlook on, on what that is to be in a drive through now. Um, I agree. 
they, they don't leave. I mean, like, like I said, it used to be no. years ago, you see a big stack, everyone's mad, they got to rush, they got to get to work, and they're out, they're pulling out. It's just, now, <laughs> you're, just, you're there, and, and everybody's looking at their phone. You know, they're on TikTok, and they're swiping, and, and <laughs> they turn, then they get their stuff. It's, and especially, it's young, young kids. Oh, yeah, and especially now that things cost so much more, they don't care. So yes. they've already bought a drink. They're not going to leave because they're going to waste, you know, eight bucks, nine bucks. So they're just going to sit and wait in line. And this includes adults with kids yeah. in the car and the yeah. whole nine, everything. So. Wow. So what, what would be your thoughts on um, rather than having drive through space, drive through space, drive through space throughout a, a length of road? What if they were all bunched up on one big property? You mean like different different companies on one big property? Right. That's so, very um. That's very sort of. Uh, that's, that's, uh, I I can't wrap my head around the concept. I mean, it's then, not. It. I mean, you see. You, it, then, then, if you have somebody who likes Dunkin' and somebody who likes Starbucks, they think it's you know. They could there's different leave, things from leave, every place. <laughs> we're, across, we're across the street from each other anyway. I mean, it's, it's you know, I know. It's it's we, we are. They, you know, we're all in the same place. got to stop and see Dave at the bank first. That's very, uh, yeah, the Jetsons right there, like have different things, like everyone's just weaving in and out of each other. Um, yeah. Well, no, yeah. but that's what's happening. That's what's happening. I mean, you know, like, it, you know, people go to different places for different things and they go through drive throughs all the time. I mean, you know, I shudder to think how many times I took my four kids through McDonald's in East Lyme. I mean, it's like, it's frightening me to me to even think about it, but, um, but, you know, this is kind of the way it's going and, and it is profitable for towns. I will say that because, um, you know, the, you do have, you know, a high rate of business um, and it brings people to the town. I mean, that is the other thing too. It well, brings not a, customers. Well, not if not if they don't get out of their car, it doesn't. They just no. they drive oh, in and they car. drive out. Yeah. Well, I mean, it does bring. Um, you know, I know that East Lime is trying to do some work, and Niantic's trying to, you know, add some stores and stuff like that. So, um, you know, we have a high tourist off of the highway and stuff like that, but. It does bring, you know, speaking from a, the perspective of someone that had four children at once, I had two sets of twins in two years. Um, mm -hmm. I could not get out of my car easily ever. <laughs> um, so for what a good eight years, I drove through drive throughs a lot because I couldn't physically get out of my car with all my children safely. Let's just put it that way. Um, so you know, when you put drive throughs in, you bring another, you bring another, um, you know, clientele, um, to the, to the game. Um, so, but yeah, you definitely want to have that be, you know, definitely having that, that window is primary, um, and having, you know, speed be an issue, stacking be an issue. What does the footprint look like? And you guys have to determine for Old Saybrook, like what would be the best thing for the town. But the, as far as the customer is concerned, if they like the product, they will come and they will, they just, they will, they will definitely, they'll wait. So. Um, I, would, I would agree. I know. So, uh, so in my community, so the town that I live in, we have, it's, it's similar to a route one. And I got it. I have a, 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 an old friendly that turned into a Duncan a couple of years ago, walk-in store. And in the next town over, we have a drive through My town doesn't, they, they don't, they don't want it a uh, smaller town. And, um, and uh, everybody I know goes to the, they go to the next town. They don't go to it. So the store we have sitting there, the front of these big, beautiful stores, seating, all that. Nope. Everybody, my, my wife included, right past it, right to the next town over to go, to go to the window, you know, but the town doesn't want it. And you're kind of saying to yourself, Hey, there's obviously a want for this town. A lot, a lot of families, moms don't want to get out of the car they want to do their thing uh they even have a they, you know some walk up like makeshift uh cleaners places where they they actually open up and they'll bring they'll drop the cleaners right in your car for that you know uh, mm. but they but they won't do the duncan so it's it's something that you know for you guys you guys got your work ahead of you but it is you know it's it's what's coming and it's what people want you know uh, we i do believe that you know because if you open it they show up they're all there i mean it's 
you know. It's, yeah, I mean, you have a different, you know, customer today. They have, we have, the more dogs come through our drive through than I can even tell you. Um, <laughs> dogs are in people's cars 24-7. Um, they go walk their dog. They can't bring the dog in the store. So they get into their car and they drive to the drive-thru. Um, the drive-thru is a phenomenal place for people who are single, who don't want to go out and interact with people who have their dog with them. They go right through, they get their coffee and they're gone. And they're still spending money, you know, every day. And these are regular customers. Um, you know, but yeah, I definitely looking at like, I mean, it's the way things are going, you know, and not everybody likes it. I understand that. And, but it is kind of the nature of business as far as things that people are looking to get every day. Okay. Sometimes I wish we could do it at the grocery store, to be honest with you. <laughs> well, this has been very helpful. Yes. Very helpful. Yes. Very informative. Thank you. For- Thank you. Yeah, yeah of Anytime. course. I got uh, that, that, that. and come visit all our stores and you'll see. Yeah. <laughs> we have to go to the bank first. Right? Yeah. Chris has a lot of stores to go visit, though. I, yeah. I only have one. <laughs> yeah. You have the yeah. one, but you'll get a real drive through experience. Yeah. <laughs> all right, well. Stay tuned. We we have we learned a lot. Thank you, and uh, we will incorporate it. But we'll, we're going to end up with land use regulations, which will accommodate some of what you've described us as the trend. And yeah. yet, and yet we're still cognizant that mm-hmm. we're trying to do something that's good for the town. Yes. Sure. And, sure. and yeah, bringing business is one thing, but bringing vehicles that drive in and drive out may yeah. not be. The best thing for the town. So right. by put by by putting things in the right places, we'll try to achieve a balance. Yes, definitely, definitely. Sounds good. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night. Have you a great too. night. Bye now. Yeah. Thanks, Thank for, thanks, thanks for coming. Great yes. to see you all. Oh, here. Yes. Okay, but I'll talk to you tomorrow. Thank you again. Thanks. Super serious. Well. All right, so um, we want to look at the rough draft. We'll see what went over and um, uh, hit, hit the rough spots okay. and come back for fine tuning another, another time. I mean, it's really up to you. I just took a bunch of well, ideas and well, kind Chris's of- email said that she received only two, two. comments right. from people yeah. ahead of time. So I have and, and now that we've time. had this, all right, we're going to we'll assign it to everybody again. That uh, this this time you don't get to say you're waiting for more information <laughs> if you were. But <laughs> this time before our next meeting, you have to fill in the blanks for numbers, pick a number if there's two, or make up a new one, um, and um, figure out uh, some finer points and um, incorporate. And there may be things in here you absolutely don't like. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, this was just trying to pull from different places and different ideas, just sure. something to start. Oh, yeah, with. it's a starting pair. Um, it's, no, it's, it's pretty clear that this restaurant is a way different than the banks in the Sanders. We could we could have all of how many banks we have? Six. Six a lot. Yeah. They're not even a problem, really. Maybe because um, of the location too, but this this whole restaurant, these people are just in a world of they don't even know what goes on outside the building. Just just how long does it take to get the donut ready? It's a whole different thing for them. They're not even thinking about the traffic problems and yeah, right, right, yeah. So how many of those do we want? So, so I would I would say things that I would look for comments on is uh, is a drive through food service thing. Uh, allowed as a principal use or must it be accessory? And um, we have a minimum building size of 750 square feet, which is big enough for Duncan. Mm-hmm. But yeah. is will that be necessary in the future? Should we stay with that for the future use of the land? Should should the yes. the wind the drive through window business go away? What do you do with a building that's made only for a drive through window except wait for another drive through window to fill it. Yeah. Whereas if you had a 850 square foot building, there would be a lot more use for, for it 
to fulfill. So principal versus accessory required is a, is a key decision point, I would say. Um, how many drive-throughs at what density, multi, same lot, distance separating different lots, that's another big consideration. And uh, tra on-site traffic flow, um, I think we'll eventually come up with this either discussion with the traffic consultant or the people who have experience, like we heard about the police department likes this layout that we, we can pick a preferred layout. They like the, they park there because it's good visibility, visibility. to see people, yeah. not as far as the banking part of it. They yeah. like no, it. no. As that's part of the observing, yeah. 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 it has yeah. nothing to do with the bank. We, I think yeah. we should, I think we should have a picture of what would be a good layout, and what would be an acceptable layout, and what would be unacceptable. So, so we don't get, so we don't make things worse. Yeah. It seems I'm just kind of brainstorming here because you're going to send me comments. It seems that pharmacies and banks have less of a Stacking, issue. stacking, demand. Oh, yeah, I disagree with pharmacy. Okay. Because well, CVS. Depending on how we only have one, and their stacking is adequate. But if you've noticed in the last five, six weeks that that because of the outbreaks with flu and everything else, a lot is full, and the drive-through is wrapped around the front of the building. Oh, it is. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, in, in the afternoon. In the afternoon, and I don't go in. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's so it's, the cars are. It's fine. almost. Uh, I would say that the pharmacy would be similar to um, a, fat, a food establishment in okay. terms of that. Does it take a, a little, little bit? Time. Obviously, the location here is adequate, like David said about his facility, which I use frequently, and it, you never have a problem. Yeah. But if there was another pharmacy to come in, I think that has to be given the same consideration right. as as the uh, as the food. Yeah, to me that's different. You're right. And yeah. the, the because more and more is going to the, to that. I mean, if the CVS person was here this evening, they probably would have indicated that that business is equal to the sixty percent that yeah. the, the coffees yeah. uh, places are experiencing. Mm -hmm. And so that yeah. comes that yeah, I do. We impact I that by that particularly when you're particularly when you know someone is is sick or ill and they 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 want to go and get their prescriptions they don't want to go inside right 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 so it's only it's in if, you could keep the, if you could keep the sick people outside in their cars that would probably be better yeah. right wow. all right so but we we would impact that by a separation distance of the window from the curb cut right and the stacking space on the on the lot would have to also be considered as a separate thing to be separated from the curb cut and so that that's where land regulation comes into these businesses. They'll survive. They'll figure out a way. Right. <laughs> yeah. My I, I look at Google Earth for the Starbucks in East Lime, and I thought, oh, that's pretty good. They come in off of the main thoroughfare uh, that that goes up to Flanders, right? And then they can go out to that service road that goes up mm -hmm. to the DOT garage. But the town said no. no. They shut that right. one. They shut the one. Down. Right. Yeah. So they did seems to me that that would have worked, but I guess it didn't. So backed yeah. up onto the okay. highway, yeah. state highway. Yeah, but they were leaving at a traffic light. That's the thing. Yeah. <laughs> well, that traffic light that's is That's probably mess. what backed it up. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. A, that's a mess. So do you want to send me comments and I'll keep just trying yeah, this to- This time I'll send you comments. <laughs> <laughs> I'll keep whittling away, you know, yeah. away at something. The other thing you heard out of it is both from the bank as well as the other two is that the square footage of a building is a lot less now. Getting smaller. Now, yes. Getting yes, smaller yes. and smaller. Yes. Well, that's why I brought up housing because right. a bank, I don't I don't know if banks are amenable to having people live over the vault, but that, yeah, <laughs> yeah. whatever. But uh, it seems like a bank with a like Guilford Savings Bank with a beautiful semi-residential style building, mm -hmm. they could shrink their floor space on the first floor and put residential in there. They could. Yeah. yeah. Well, maybe there, maybe there's other regulations involved. But I think there's a good point about the idling I, and the noise. Yeah. I mean, if yeah. I'd rather live over a bank than over a smelly restaurant. You know? But, well, but I think that smells coffee all the time. And yeah, well, 
You're right. Or exhaust fumes. Well, exhaust fumes if they're exactly. roasting coffee, it's you a whole different. Your window thing. in the summer and Gil Guilford, has, like the Guilford has a good spot because you can actually park and go into the bank without going across the drive through lane. Right. That's you know I mean that for multi use, mixed yes. use. Yes. People are protected. They don't have to go across. Like keeping. Right. So, yeah. Right. yeah, that's the worst one. That's yeah. The, that's the nightmare. Yeah. Yes. Even after they fixed. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So you're. All right. So what I think. What if we just keep this on the agenda? Yes. Kind of a last okay. minute item. Yes. So right. we have to go through this. Your next meeting. When um, is the next meeting? Because that's the holiday. The 18th. Wednesday. So Wednesday oh, as well. Another Wednesday. Like, so you have a special I, it, exception. I, I, I won't be here. 18th. 18th. I, I it's won't be here then. Wednesday the 18th. Yes. You have I, a, could, I could participate by Zoom. Which Trump. is the third Wednesday. When is Park and Rant? Oh, that's the second Wednesday. Okay. So what, what do we have on so that? So you have a special exception for a house in the gateway. I expect you're going to have some public participation for that one if they get through ZBA. So for which I, I don't... it's a house and the gateway oh, okay. conservation zone. You have fine fettle, mm -hmm. which you will get folks out, and you will have oasis if all goes as planned. So oasis would be they you'll have to open the first night of the public hearing, but you won't be able to right there out of time unless they give an extension. Right. But the Wetlands Commission doesn't meet till the 19th, 19th. so oh. it, that one would have oh, okay. to get continued. Yeah, that one will have to. Unless they, so what I'll do is I'll just keep adding this to the end of the agenda. If you can send me comments, I'll try to okay. flip them in and just okay. go from there, have something to start with. And then just to, the six is pretty open depending on whatever gets continued from the other meeting which probably could work for a workshop um, but you also have a petition to amend the regulations for cannabis cultivation i read so, about that today so you're oh was that in the examiner i didn't see the website i saw the website i'm gone on february 6th I'm at so we'll just try to plug away <laughs> Okay. You're going when? He's going to Aruba. Again? Yeah. Some time of year. Good for you. Yeah. I think we have to open the beach with a with a trying to drive through with Wi-Fi. Yeah. You could set it zoom into the meeting from the drive through. Not alcoholic. Go to a Dunkin' Donuts. <laughs> yeah, will, will that day come? You can order 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 up a beer or you know. sure. You're doing it well. Wait, you're not supposed you to be driving while you're doing yeah. it. Yeah, <laughs> well, well, we'll put the window on the other side so it pass. <laughs> so with regard to their earlier meeting this evening, that's all hypothetical stuff that they're putting forth now in order to incorporate into a pro legislation proposal. So apparently they're going to propose and last year they proposed the public act that they said mm -hmm, that right. I know you and I reviewed pretty intensively. Um, yeah, because they had up there the things they learned from the one that didn't make it last year. And then an another one last year never got out of committee. And uh, so, so I think this is more of a PR piece to fill everybody in versus reacting. But the reality of it is until we actually see the draft bill. Yeah. You know, I, I mean, the one thing that I think is going to be an issue is that if you don't opt in, yeah. you don't get discretionary funding for infrastructure. Yeah. Right. It's unclear to, to what degree does that funding from the state Get, get affected is it everything you could yeah. get cut off entirely yeah or that's the way it looks on the screen yeah yeah and the decision as to whether or not to do that would be made by the board of select yeah they would and yeah yeah okay yeah put it on the board of select but we aren't going to do that no I just want just review yeah, just reviewing what i heard yeah, yeah. okay yeah so anyway okay yeah. that's interesting we'll just watch the act Okay. But otherwise, anything else? 
I don't really have anything else for you if you want to move to adjournment. Good. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Unanimous. Unanimous.